Good morning, everybody. Good to be with you. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you are with us, that you go before us. We pray that you would speak to us and help us to hear your voice. Amen. Amen. Thank you to Stephen for uh, reading the 23rd Psalm to us. The 23rd Psalm arguably is the fruit of David's reflections on everyday life. His experience of goodness, provision and guidance connects with his memory of being a shepherd before he went on to other things. Today we're beginning a, a new series of sermons under the banner of Restore, helping us to stop and take some time to reflect on the um, year that has just gone past and to begin looking to the future. There'll be a whole host of uh, um, sermons shared over the next five weeks. And, uh, um, as well as that, each week on a Monday, we'll, there'll be a, a, a recording of that sermon, hence the uh, um, phone uh, uh, will be put out on uh, a Monday. And then each day there'll be a verse for the day going through the week. And then in discipleship groups, there'll be opportunity to think a little bit further about the theme for that week. Um, I want to encourage you that if you're not in a discipleship group, now would be a time to join one. Um, and if you need help on the uh, technology side of things, if your group's meeting um, online, then, then do get in touch with us. Um, but equally, also under the guidance, there is the opportunity, if you choose to do so, to meet in groups of six. And, uh, so that might be something for you to think about. This week, I want to encourage you to take some time to reflect on your life at this time and specifically on our experiences of the last year. I've entitled this uh, talk, Reflecting on a Change of Perspective. Now, I don't know what you know about a man called Alfred Noble. That may be a name that rings a bell with you, it may not be uh, a name that rings a bell with you. But in April of 1988, Alfred Noble's brother died. And in the newspaper, mistakenly, it was reported that Alfred had died. Now, what made it even worse is that in the obituary that was in this newspaper, it totally ripped into Alfred. The newspaper declared that Dr. Alfred Noble had become rich by finding more effective ways of killing people. Nice. The reason behind that is that Alfred had made his fortune by running a company that made dynamite and other military grade explosives. And according to this um, obituary, that's where the money had come from. Now, according to the biographies of his life, it was this mistake that totally changed his perspective on life. And when this took place, he chose to give most of his vast fortune, around £200 million in today's money, to creating the Nobel Prizes that confirmed the greatest benefit to humankind. And there were prizes in physics, in chemistry, in biology, in literature, but most notably, and this is where you might have heard of Alfred Nobel, he gave a prize to the person who had done the most or the best to advance fellowship amongst nations. Hence the birth of the Nobel Peace Prize. 
And that's how he's known today. But Alfred had a total change in perspective. Now I pray that for me, for us to um, maybe undertake a change in perspective, we wouldn't have to go through a similar kind of thing. But as you look back over the last year, just stop and reflect for a moment. What new perspective has this last year given to you? What lessons can we learn? What is God opening our eyes to? And what is your testimony of God's goodness? In Mark chapter 1, we read these words. The time has come. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. In those words, Jesus is calling his people, God's people, to a change of perspective. Now is the time. Turn around and undertake a change in direction and attitude. Repentance is all about thinking differently and therefore acting differently. And the kingdom of God that he speaks about is not simply about rules and regulations and restrictions and lockdowns. But it's about grace and mercy, peace and hope. It's about love. And this new direction that he calls us to is full of potential and loaded with new possibilities. Now, as I look back over the last year, even in the depths of the valley of the shadow of death, to use the phrase from the 23rd Psalm. There have been things for us to celebrate. If you like, glimmers of hope. We've had to find new ways of relating to one another. And interestingly, even though for a lot of the time we've been in lockdown, we've been in isolation, um, I have to say on many occasions I've found myself having some really deep conversations with people relating to them in a totally different way there have been acts of kindness along the way yeah. I, you know, I want to thank the team that put together those acts of kindness and got them out to people just to enable people to know that, that, that we still care. That we're still there for them. But added to that, there have been other acts of kindness. I know of people that have been shopping for one another. I know of people that have been um, caring for one another in different ways. But then, as we move on from there, as we reflect on from there, I think that the events of the the last year sadly has given us something of a wider perspective a new perspective about um, generosity a new perspective about the people that are important and in this uh, wonderful phrase came out of the pandemic about the frontline workers and it was interesting who those people ended up being So what I'm trying to encourage you into, what I'm trying to think through myself, is the beginning of a reflection on what is it that really matters when it comes to us being the church here in this community at this time. Could now be a time, a moment for a change of direction and perspective. Or again, in the context of the 23rd Psalm, are we being called to new pasture? A 
we, am I, willing to follow the good shepherd? Even if we're not sure where he's going. I remember many, many years ago reading a book called Benjamin Alexander Sheep. Um, I've not got it anymore, but it's an amazing book about a sheep who wasn't happy with the where the shepherd was taking him. <clears throat> and dug his heels in. And he said, I'll lead the way, I'll tell him where we're going. We don't need this shepherd telling us where we're going, it's going to be dangerous where we're going. And the rest is history. Through this time, have we learned to trust the shepherd in a fresh way? We may not know what the future holds, but surely we know who holds the future. The Lord is my shepherd. And Jesus is Lord.